All right. So again, I've been working on this Jupiter Hub Kubernetes thing. You can watch a different playlist on all that stuff. And uh, a friend of ours in the Twitch stream, LBGDN, reminded me of some of the very basic things with Helm. And I'm I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm really, 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 really new to Helm. And I've been complaining about it. <laughs> you can read my Zettelcast and my Zettels about me complaining about how bad Helm is. And one of the things that has bothered me the most about Helm is a very basic thing, is figuring out what ends up being the result of what you've been doing. So it's there's so many individual YAML files that are involved with Kubernetes, it's already confusing enough. And then you have the templates on top of that. And then once you make changes to your Helm chart and or to the base templates and everything, you end up with this kind of scenario where you don't really know what, it, what the artifacts are before they get deployed into your Kubernetes space. If you've been doing any of this at all for any amount of time, you know what I'm talking about. It gets really annoying. And so today, uh, I was taught um, about, I learned about Helm Get Manifest, which which had an equivalent in previous versions of Helm, Helm 2 versus 3. Uh, you want Helm 3, by the way. <laughs> I wrote the migration, you dropped Tiller and a bunch of other things. So you definitely want Helm 3, you don't have it. But so here's here's the really awesome thing about it. So I was able to, um, I, let, me, let me see if I can find it again. So I'm going to do another one. So I've been working on this Jupyterhub stuff. So K get um that case. So Helm, Helm uh, get manifest is uh, they get right. Yeah, Helm get manifest requires one argument, and then you need the name, of course, of your of your your release, and it's it's called Helm. So then look, I mean, look at this. It has everything. And the first time I'm like reading through this, I'm like, wait a second, this is this is not Helm chart YAML. In fact, at first I started ripping on it because I was like, I wish they would make the chart YAML at least separate and distinguished from you know, the actual resource YAML, which can be confusing. And if I, if I saw API version, I'm like, oh my God, because, you know, Kind does that. Kind picked API version in sort of its YAML configuration files, even though it's the same confusing word as is used by all the Kubernetes readers. They want it for consistency. I don't know why. They just have it that way. So I'm like itemizing through this thing, reading through it. And I'm like, this is pretty damn cool here. This has got, this has got all this stuff in it. Wait, and I'm like, and I was like, jump back. That's a, that's a quote from Footloose, by the way. Jump back. <laughs> I, I need it. Somebody give me a clip. Somebody give me the jump back clip from, from Kevin Bacon. I got to put that in my clips list. So so I'm, I'm reading through the YAML files here. And I'm like, this is the actual resource YAML definitions uh, that I've been running in Minikube. And so it's just pulling them down. And I've been looking for this for a long time because I've already got Jupyterhub deployed to our dev cluster. But along the path, it would have been a lot nicer if I could have like, you know, previewed what the YAML was going to be before. And there's dry run and everything in Helm. So you can do that before you even apply it. But, you know, by putting it in Minikube or something like that, or even after you get it all working, you're like, please, 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 God, let me like take a snapshot of this so that I can know exactly what's ultimately going to end up in my, 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 my cluster, all these different pieces, these moving parts, so that I know when I've hit that again, if I have to make a change later. Now, obviously, you can do that through, you know, putting your, your YAML files and templates and everything into source management, which you should do, or layering on your own overlays application of some kind when you make, you know, template changes if you have to. There's a million ways of approaching that. But one of the most, you know, like calm you down kind of moments is that I know exactly what the YAML is that's being deployed into my cluster. I know exactly what it was. So, so get manifest in Helm is your, uh, it gives you the ability to take a snapshot in time of everything that has been deployed uh, using that Helm thing. And here's another reason this is interesting. So in my particular case, I had to deploy something that has an Arbok, you know, cluster role and that was not included in the Helm chart. I mean, help, or differently, we haven't decided whether we're going to use, whether I have to do another a new cluster role. There's already a service account and everything in there. So I have to figure out, you know, what's going on there. Do I need a new one? Can I use the existing one? Blah, blah, blah. But, but knowing what I have and what the Helm chart has actually done, what, what, it, what it ended up doing after the whole thing is done, has been run and it's in there, what do I get? And, and that's what Get Manifest does. So that's really all I have to say. Learn get manifest. There's actually another little thing here I'll tell you about after we go through this. So, so this is all the YAML. I don't think there's any secrets in here. I hope not. I mean, it's all local, so it doesn't matter. But, but um, this is not work related. It's just you know. So we got all these. It shows me everything here. The egress lines. 
you know, the pod slides, everything. So, so if for no other reason than for my education, I can actually go through and see everything that was added by the Selm chart after the fact by running it in a media cube or whatever, and then running get manifest and looking at all this. And if you actually want to see it in terms of not YAML files, uh, but if you wanted to, these are resource YAML files, not chart YAML value files. But if you, if you wanted to go back in here and you wanted to see, oh God, that's gotta be a private key of some kind. Uh, values, oh no, that's not, it's a, it is opaque. Yeah. I'm not going to, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't matter. It's nothing, it's not public. So, but I still get freaked out by doing that. <laughs> so, but, but here's the thing. So our, my friend here on Twitch as well said, yeah, you can, you can pass this to kubectl. And, and do dash f, uh, get, you know, get dash f, f uh, dot, and then, I'm sorry, dash, which reads from standard in, and, and then you get everything. So now, you know, you have, you have all of your resources are here. So you can, this is all the stuff you're used to seeing, you know, when you want to get summaries about, about your items and stuff. So you can pass it all in. You can even snapshot that and you could take a moment in time view of everything that is on your system, everything the Helm chart did. And the whole point of Helm, is to bring together lots of you know disparate parts and pieces and custom and standard and everything and put them all in one place. That's the benefit. That's the reason Helm is now a part of one point you know the two two the two thousand twenty two certification exam. You have to know about this stuff and be able to interpret it. So being able to interpret this output is really important. It's really important to be able to understand what all that stuff's doing. But if you can't even see it because you didn't know about Helm Get Manifest. You would be like I was before today. So maybe you can do Helm Get Manifest and you know you can you can look at all these amazing things. While I'm at it, one other little bonus. Uh, this is something I did not know. It's a minicube thing. So I did a video on this. But if you do minicube, uh, if you do you do minicube service uh, dash dash URL and then you give the name of your service, you probably know this. People are laughing at me. Look, I'm new, okay? Uh, and this stuff's complicated. Look at that. It doesn't find it. It didn't do it for default. We're going to... Oh, wait. I forgot to put the namespace. I forgot to put the namespace. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. We're going to try. Yeah, there it goes. So there's the there's the URL you have to open if you want to go get your... Go get your... Um, go and you can actually do that and just open a web browser here. I, that's kind of a bonus. Oh, but, you know, that's the actual URL even though it's broken because I'm doing the single user spawn right now. That's, that's, but I'm able to debug it and then clearing site dash data. We, we, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry about that. I don't know why I even talked to you about that. Just remember, get manifest. So, um, get manifest is your friend. If I, can I find my notes again? I'm, I'm a mess. I'm a total mess. So, yeah, Helm get manifest. Uh, uh, you can even pipe it. Uh, pipe to uh, uh, get let's see k you know k get um, dash f f and then it'll show you uh, to see uh, what you would see for each uh, k uh, get uh, uh, resource anyway use that love it you'll have a good time you'll be you'll be uh, able to know what's happening now, the next step for me is to like really nail down the dry run in advance so that I can see what it's going to do to my cluster before it does it. And Helm does have that. But the problem is, is that Helm is not the only thing involved. You're going to have service accounts, cluster bindings and other ingress stuff and in, in configurations that might not fall within the Helm chart. So those aren't really within dry run. You kind of I like the idea of being able to see everything that was changed by the chart so I can distinguish what was changed by the chart from what was changed by me. <laughs> Because there's going to be stuff in there that I'm going to have to change to make it work, you know, or back, you know, stuff. So take that, go play with it, have fun with it. Talk to you later.